Lululemon shares are sliding nearly 10% today after the retailer updated its fourth quarter guidance. Investors stuck on the company's gross margins for the quarter, with Lulu now projecting margins to decline between 90 to 110 basis points year over year. This coming in lower than Lulu's initial projection for positive growth, gross margin growth of 10 to 20 basis points. Wall Street analysts reacting to that announcement today. Wedbush Securities cutting its price target on the stock to $380 from $430. The analyst behind that call, Tom Nikich, joining us now, Wedbush Securities, a senior vice president of equity research. Tom, it's great to have you here. So certainly I think this might have caught you by surprise, at least a downgrade that we saw in terms of guidance for gross margins. You were expecting a more upbeat uh, guidance overall from Lululemon. So what do you make of the news today and the reaction that we're seeing in the stock? Yeah, I mean, th- thanks very much uh, for having me on the show, uh, first off. And uh, as far as what we heard from Lululemon this morning, um, so I expected uh, them to raise guidance on both sales and uh, the EPS lines. Uh, we got the sales raise that uh, I expected. Uh, we did see very, very strong demand trends and very, very strong top line trends uh, during the holiday period. Uh the gross margin miss was a surprise. And this is the second straight quarter that they've missed uh, gross margin guidance, which is not ideal. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, right, like, I mean, they've talked about 100 basis points of margin pressure this quarter. Uh, you know, we heard from Nike a couple weeks ago, Nike's gross margins were down 300 basis points. Uh, Under Armour guided to Q4 or, or calendar Q4 gross margins down 600 basis points. Adidas talked about uh, 900 basis points of pressure. So all in, down 100 basis points for Lululemon, not really that bad. Why then a drop of nearly 10% on the stock? Is that an overreaction by investors? Uh, I think it's a reaction. I mean, you know, I think, look, like when you kind of miss gross margin two quarters in a row, uh, it does kind of raise some raise some eyebrows. Um, in the grand scheme of things, look, like I think demand – wins out in the end and clearly what they told us this morning is that demand is really really strong they expect top line growth to be up 25 to 27 percent uh in the fourth quarter um really like i i I think that in the long run this is going to be much ado about nothing and as they clear through some of the excess inventory that they've got uh i think uh everything will work itself out in the end and they'll have a pretty good uh 2023. Yeah, Tom, speaking of the excess inventory level, certainly what has been in the 80s now in terms of percentage growth in Q2 and Q3 on a year-over-year basis. It was interesting, though, in the last earnings call, we did hear from Lulu execs. They defended that jump, saying that they were too lean in the past and they strategically positioned inventory to be able to capture that guest demand that they were expecting this year. Is that then, are you at all looking at this as maybe it is a smart strategy? Yeah, I mean, look, Clearly, last year, there were all types of supply chain issues, and there were inventory shortages and and stuff like that. And they have really, really strong demand, and they want to be able to capitalize on that demand. Um, The other thing that I think is encouraging about Lululemon is a lot of their product is core, seasonless product that you can sell year-round, right? Uh, You know, their core black yoga pants, their ABC pant for men's, uh, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, I don't think having uh, high inventory growth is as concerning for a a business like Lululemon as it is for something uh, uh, for a brand that's more seasonal and you really got to get stuff out the door, you know, in December or else you're not going to be able to sell it. Uh, So I I don't think it's as, as troubling as it is, as it would be for many other brands. Uh, Speaking of other brands, you mentioned some of the other margins uh, that look far more problematic. How difficult overall do you think this quarter is going to be in the retail sector? Uh, Look, it's going to be (laughs) it's it's been very promotional and especially in light of what we saw in the holiday 2021 uh, period where discounts were very, very hard to come by a year ago. Discounts were very easy to come by this year. And um I think that's well telegraphed at this point. You know, I think a lot of companies out there have talked about having uh, uh, tough, um, tough margin performances this year. Uh, The question mark becomes, how does demand hold up in in 2023? Because demand has held up relatively well um, in spite of inflation and and, and some other factors. And so, 
Uh, you know, I think we're, when we look ahead, it's going to be, you know, we're, I think we're going to be in a position where the strong brands will continue to perform well and will continue to to generate solid demand. Uh, and it'll be tougher for some of the other players in the space. If I'm speaking of that, seeing clear winners and losers within this space, you cover a number of companies, Nike, Poshmark, Under Armour, Steve Madden, Allbirds, just to name a few of the other uh, companies that you do cover in the retail space. We also got the news recently about Stitch Fix laying off a large percentage of their workforce, citing the slowdown of what we could see heading into the new year. What's your gauges in terms of layoffs and what that could potentially mean for retail over the next couple of months? Yeah, I mean, look, clearly this is the second round of layoffs that they've done in the last six months, um, which clearly tells you that the things are tough at, at Stitch Fix. Um, you know, Lululemon is a business that's that's got a lot of momentum. Stitch Fix is a business that does not. And you know, their sales trends have been heading in the wrong way. It, you know, sales trends have decelerated, you know, four or five quarters in a row. Um, the issue I see with the layoffs that they've been doing, and they, they also have a strategy to, to pull back on marketing expenses. Um, yes, that will help the cash burn of the business. Yes, it will help the, the EBITDA line. You know what it doesn't do? It doesn't really help turn around the top line. And ultimately, you know, I think that revenue is the elixir to, you know, any retailer's problems. And, you know, if you're, if you're doing things that make it harder to turn around the top line, then it's tough to have visibility into a turnaround that's Stitch Fix. So um, I understand why they've they've implemented the cost cutting uh, initiatives that they have, but I'm not sure it's going to do much to, to, to turn the ship around. Yeah, tough to cut your way to wins in that environment. Tom Nickich from Wedbush, good to see you, sir. Thank you.